I invite you to stand if you are able to do so in honor of the reading of the gospel lesson. This day's gospel lesson is found in Matthew 25, starting with verse 31 and moving through verse 40. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? When was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? The king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. You pray with me just now. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. The story I want to share with you today is called Papa Panov's Special Christmas. Papa Panov's Special Christmas. This is a classic Christmas story. Uh, so many times it is attributed to Leo Tolstoy. Tolstoy um, actually translated this story from the original text, so he did have a hand in it, certainly. He translated it into English. But the original story was written in French by Ruben Salins, and uh, it is based on the scripture that I just shared with you from the Gospel of Matthew. Hear now our Christmas message today in the form of a story. It was Christmas Eve, and although it was still afternoon, lights had begun to appear in the shops and houses of the little Russian village, for the short winter day was nearly over. Excited children scurried indoors, and now only muffled sounds of chatter and laughter escaped through, cro through closed shutters. Old Papa Panov, the village shoemaker, stepped outside his shop to take one last look around. The sounds of happiness, the bright lights, and the faint but delicious smells of Christmas cooking reminded him of past Christmas times when his wife had still been alive and his own children little. Now they had gone. His usually cheerful face with his little laughter wrinkles behind the round steel spectacles looked sad now. But he went back indoors with a firm step, put up the shutters and set a pot of coffee to heat on the charcoal stove. Then with a sigh, he settled into his big armchair. Papa Panov did not often read, but tonight he pulled down the big old family Bible and slowly tracing the lines with one forefinger, he read again the Christmas story. He read how Mary and Joseph, tired by their journey to Bethlehem, found no room for them at the inn, so that Mary's little baby was born in a cow shed. Oh dear, oh dear, exclaimed Papa Panov. If only they had come here. I would have given them my bed and I could have covered the baby with my patchwork quilt to keep him warm. He read on about the wise men who had come to see the baby Jesus, bringing him splendid gifts. Papa Panov's face fell. I have no gift that I could give him, he thought sadly. Then his face brightened. He put down the Bible, got up and stretched his long arms to the shelf high up in his little room. He took down a small dusty box and he opened it. Inside was the perfect pair of tiny leather shoes. 
Papa Panov smiled with satisfaction. Yes, they were as good as he remembered. The best shoes he had ever made. I should give him those, he decided, as he gently put them away and sat down again. He was feeling tired now, and the further he read, the sleepier he became. The print began to dance before his eyes, so that as he closed them, just for a minute, and he fell asleep. And as he slept, he dreamt. He dreamed that someone was in his room, and he knew at once, as one does in dreams, who the person was. It was Jesus. You've been wishing that you could see me, Papa Panov, he said kindly. Then look for me tomorrow. It will be Christmas Day, and I will visit you. But look carefully, for I shall not tell you who I am. When at last Papa Panov awoke, the bells were ringing out and a thin light was filtering through the shutters. Bless my soul, said Papa Panov. It's Christmas Day. He stood up and stretched himself, for he was rather stiff. Then his face filled with happiness as he remembered his dream. This would be a very special Christmas after all, for Jesus was coming to visit him. How would he look? Would he be a little baby as he was that first Christmas? Would he be a grown man, a carpenter, or the great king that he is, God's son? He must watch carefully the whole day through so that he recognized him, however he came. Papa Panov put on a special pot of coffee for his Christmas breakfast, took him down the shutters, and looked out the window. The street was deserted. No one was stirring yet. No one except the road sweeper. He looked as miserable and as dirty as ever, and well he might be. Whoever wanted to work on Christmas Day and in the raw cold and bitter freezing mist of such a morning. Papa Panov opened the shop door, letting in a thin stream of cold air. Come in, he shouted across the street cheerily. Come in and have some hot coffee to keep out of the cold. The sweeper looked up, scarcely able to believe his ears. He was only too glad to put down his broom and come into the warm room. His old clothes steamed gently in the heat of the stove, and he clasped both red hands around the comforting warm mug as he drank. Papa Panov watched him with satisfaction, but every now and then his eyes strayed to the window. It would never do to miss his special visitor. Expecting someone? The sweeper asked at last, so Papa Panov told him about his dream. Well, I hope he comes, the sweeper said. You've given me a bit of Christmas cheer I never expected to have. I'd say you deserve to have your dream come true. And he actually smiled. When he had gone, Papa Panov put on cabbage soup for his dinner, then went to the door again, scanning the street. He saw no one, but he was mistaken. Someone was coming. The girl walked so slowly and quietly hugging the walls of shops and houses, that it was a while before he even noticed her. She looked very tired, and she was carrying something. As she drew nearer, he could see that it was a baby, wrapped in a thin shawl. There was such sadness in her face, and in the pinched little face of the baby, that Papa Panov's heart went out to them. Won't you come in, he called, stepping outside to meet them. You both need a warm seat by the fire and a rest. The young mother let him shepherd her indoors and to the comfort of the armchair. She gave a big sigh of relief. I'll warm some milk for the baby, Papa Panov said. I've had children of my own. I can feed her for you. He took the milk from the stove and carefully fed the baby from a spoon warming her tiny feet by the stove at the same time. She needs shoes, the cobbler said. But the girl replied, I can't afford shoes. I've got no husband to bring money home. I'm on my way to the next village to get work. 
A sudden thought flashed through Papa Panov's mind. He remembered those little shoes he had looked at last night, but he'd been keeping those for Jesus. He looked again at the cold little feet and made up his mind. Try these on her, he said, handing the baby and the shoes to the mother. The beautiful little shoes were a perfect fit. The girl smiled happily and the baby gurgled with pleasure. You have been so kind to us, the girl said, when she got up with her baby to go. May all of your Christmas wishes come true. But Papa Panov was beginning to wonder if his very special Christmas wish would come true. Perhaps he'd missed his visitor. He looked up anxiously up and down the street. There were plenty of people about, but they were all faces that he recognized. There were neighbors going to call on their families. They nodded and smiled and wished him a happy Christmas, or beggars. And Papa Panov hurried indoors to fetch them hot soup and a generous hunk of bread, hurrying out again in case he missed the important stranger. All too soon, the winter dusk fell. When Papa Panov next went to the door and strained his eyes, he could no longer make out the passers-by. Most were home and indoors by now anyways. He walked slowly back into his room at last, put up the shutters and sat down wearily in his armchair. So it had been just a dream after all. Jesus had not come. Then all at once he knew that he was no longer alone in the room. This was not a dream, for he was wide awake. At first, he seemed to see before his eyes the long stream of people who had come to him that day. He saw again the old street sweeper, the young mother and her baby, and the beggars that he had fed. As they passed, each whispered, Didn't you see me, Papa Panov? Who are you? He called out, bewildered. Then another voice answered him. It was the voice from his dream the voice of Jesus. I was hungry and you fed me, he said. I was naked and you clothed me. I was cold and you warmed me. I came to you today in every one of those you helped and welcomed. Then all was quiet and still, only the sound of the big clock ticking. A great peace and happiness seemed to fill the room overflowing Papa Panov's heart until he wanted to burst out singing and laughing and dancing with joy. So he did come after all, was all that he said. <laughs> so he did come after all. So often we expect to see Jesus in a specific way. But here's the beauty that surrounds us. We can see Jesus everywhere and everyone as we reach out and help others. Even in our own journey, even people we're familiar with, even in spaces we go to all the time, we can see Jesus. Dear friends, thank you for joining us today for this Christmas story and for being part of worship with us. I thank you for tracking along with us over the last few months of this pandemic, for joining us online for worship. I really am thankful for all of you uh, who have made such efforts to keep church and to keep Jesus at the center of your lives and have taken steps with us to watch these services. And I know it's not um, as, as familiar as what we're used to, but I do thank you so much. And I thank you for all of your efforts in your heart that reaches out to others in the name of Jesus. It's my prayer today that you will encounter Christ in amazing, beautiful ways in this day. Let's share together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And now hear these words in an attitude of prayer. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. And where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Oh, dear friends, I pray that you have a wonderful New Year's, and I look forward Oh, do I look forward to seeing you, hopefully, very soon in person. But until then, I look forward to joining our hearts together as one here online. God bless you all in this day. Amen.